People suffering with severe ME have lost everything. They can't do what they need to do. They can't be who they used to be. Uh, they're very helpless, they're very dependent, and they're suffering. One of the things that they grieve the most is losing their friends because friends don't understand, they can't relate, they don't necessarily even believe the level of suffering that this person is going through. I think about a snake bite. If you're on a hike with a friend and they get bit by a poisonous snake, you're supposed to take your pocket knife and cut an X in the wound and squeeze it and suck out all that poison and spit it out and save their life. People with severe ME are poisoned not just by the disease and in their bodies, but by the rage and the anger and the fear and the betrayal of friends and the loneliness. So if you feel like someone is complaining a lot or, you know, always bringing you down, um, always mentioning things that are bad or painful or whatever, think about the poison that they're experiencing and think about that snake bite. By taking their complaints and their pain and their rage, by taking it, by letting them get it out, you are helping them a great deal. And you don't have to internalize it. You don't have to take it personally. Just, you know, spit it out and be that listener. Because when they have lost their friends and their job and their talents and all of these things to a very painful central nervous system disease that just affects everything, their brain can really hurt, be inflamed by just, you know, light, sound, someone talking, someone touching them. And their world has become so small and so limited that sometimes all they have is the person who's taking care of them. And if they need to complain to somebody, you're gonna be it. So I want you to focus on that, on the, the listening, the taking all of those complaints, focus on it as first aid. You're helping them, they're, they're poisoned, and you're helping them get that poison out. You're validating, and the things you would say are, I'm so sorry, or it's not fair, or it shouldn't have happened to you, or they shouldn't have said that to you, or I wish I could help, I wish I could fix it. I would love to be able to just you know, take that pain for one day for you, if I could. And, um, you know, by doing that, you become someone they can trust, which is hard when you have a disease people don't trust or believe. So, you know, be that person. James has a new book coming out called Unsung Poems Written in the Dark. And I want to read you one of the poems. These are things that friends have said to him um, and one or two are things that other people said to, you know, other folks with ME. Just think positive. Happiness is a choice. Have you tried celery juice? I've heard it was mental. Manifest your healing with intention. Just exercise. Your body naturally makes energy. What's your diet? You don't sleep enough. Why aren't you helping? You're so lazy. Quit being a little bitch. You're so selfish. Drama queen. Why aren't you even trying? Why do you post so much about it? Attention whore. I just don't have the mental space to deal with this right now. I would kill myself. Instead, you will support him or her and you will give them the kind of reflection that shows you can be trusted, that you understand that you can't relate 
to the level of suffering. You don't have any reference. It's nothing like a cold you've had. It's nothing like a tired you've had or a headache you've had, but you believe them.